This is The Hustlers Corner. Hello world, this is DJ Swoo straight out of Johannesburg, South Africa and welcome to The Hustlers Corner, the platform that inspires the new generation of hustlers all across the world. Now we're getting into our book reading sessions. You guys do know that um, the previous video, I did a read, I write what I like by Stephen Bantu Biko. We did the preface by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Right now, we're gonna be doing the introduction by Nkosi Nighty Biko. All right, if you haven't had a chance to read this book, this is your opportunity. I'll be splitting up different videos, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, different videos until the end of the book. You can just watch the videos and get the content. We will be um, reading different books. This is strictly for educational purposes. This is the fourth edition of the um, Steve Biko, I Write What I Like, his personal memoirs with the foreword by Njabula S. Ndebele. The next video will be the foreword by Njabula S. Ndebele, but this video is strictly the uh, introduction by Nkosinati Biko. Before I start quickly, let's go straight to the shop shop sign, all my notification gang, all the hustlers out there. On the count of three, we're clicking that like sign. One, two, three. Click, 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 click. Thank you very much. In case you've just landed on this video by accident, I'd like for you to subscribe, like, share, let your friends know about this platform for hustlers, entrepreneurs, young professionals, movers and shakers, and Africans that are sick and tired of aid or sick and tired of, um, you know, being told whatever. We're doing it for ourselves. We're building our businesses. We're creating wealth. We're reading books. We're a different breed, uh, obviously, as taught by our ancestors. That's the reason why we're reading these ideologies and where history comes from, which is the most important thing. Every hustler has to read, guys. You can't be a successful hustler if you don't hustle smart. Nowadays, you have to hustle smart. You have to be um, consuming content that's good for you, that grows you. But at the same time, you have to be reading books. Readers are leaders. And remember, leaders are readers. Thank you very much. Let's get right into it. Introduction by Nkosinati B. Go. Bantu Stephen Biko would have turned 55 years of age on December 18th, December, um, December 18th, 2003. His last birthday coincided with the circumcision ceremony of two of the younger members of the family. The entire family had gathered at my grandmother Mamkete's place for this occasion. Because we rarely come together as often as we did before her passing in 1995, we made use of this opportunity to celebrate my father's birthday. We spent the evening gathered around the family dining table, telling anecdotes and singing songs from days gone by. Before long, we had gone through a long list of people who had shared this home with us, with some becoming long-term residents. It being a common practice in the African culture to give your child a meaningful name. My father's name, Bandu, means, oh, by the way, guys, of course, Nati Biko is the son of Steve Biko, yeah? All right, my father's name, Bandu, means he who loves people. True to his name, he brought many to our home. And thanks to my grandmother, in whose house we lived at the time, these people found a warm and inviting home. You remember in the previous video, when I opened my drink in fire, I said this one is the ginger zing, which is the Ubuntu version. Ubuntu meaning humanity. So Stephen Bantu Biko, he who loved people. Ubuntu is humanity. We love people. It's in our cultures, Africans. We love people. All right, continuing with the introduction by um, Nkosinati Biko. My own childhood memories are filled with vivid memories of some of these faces. I distinctly remember the likes of Dr. Daule Mukwena, Mogi Kagisani, Peter Jones, and Marusi Mpumlwana. Mpumlwana, who is now a bishop of the Order of Ethiopia and head of the Kellogg Foundation, was later to break the news of my father's death to me. Later on the evening of the birthday, as I lay in my bed, I wondered about how much of this history had died with my grandmother. We spent the following day going through her possessions, still locked up in her kiss. You'd know black families who all have kissed, right? The one that has got um, the, the lion face on the locker there and the feet, a lion feet there. Some of those, some, some of you guys who grew up in Africa in the townships, uh, in the ghettos, you would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, um, we spent the following day going through her possessions, still locked up in her kiss almost 10 years after her death, combined with the storytelling session. The search made this the most memorable of birthday celebrations. In that kist lay a comprehensive collection of the family records. Buried deep in Mankate's um, kist were my father's own academic records from the University of South Africa, where he studied following his exclusion from the Medical School of the University of Natal's black section. Because he could not study towards a medical degree, 
by correspondence. He registered for a law degree with UNISA. His great friend, Bonnie Pichana, once told me that in my mind, I don't believe that Steve would have gone on to become a doctor. His own expensive search for knowledge had gone well beyond the field of medicine. Dr. Pichana is the current vice chancellor of the University of South Africa. I found a number of other sources that have helped me put together a vivid picture of who my father was. My own childhood memories, my family, and in particular, my mother, Ntsiki, has helped me piece together a lot of the links missing from my own memory. Meeting with his friends and fellow activists, but perhaps the most telling account of the man and his mind are his own words. In 1978, Father Alred Stubbs and Hugh Le Le Lewin collected and edited my father's writings into the first edition of I Write What I Like. The writings I understand are papers he produced and presented at various seminars and meetings. I've read this book with a frequency surpassed only by the daily newspapers that I read. At a personal level, it has provided my siblings and me with an opportunity to peep into his head. It has also helped shape some of our thinking. My mother tells me that he would have stayed he, oh, he would stay up late reading, write, reading and writing stuff. On occasions, he would lie facing the ceiling and think aloud while she took notes. Mostly, she says, there was no need to revisit or edit these. He had a way with words. On a broader level, I write what I like has become the authoritative point of reference on the depth and the breadth of political insight that built the black consciousness movement into the most powerful political force of the 70s. The success of the movement was to turn the political ebb that had been evident in the late 60s into an unstoppable flow that picked up the late 70s but also continued to re-energize political resistance into the 80s. The focus was as much on the individual as it was on creating a united political front. Based on common political identity, the individual was um, cons um, conscientized to become an active agent of change in his or her locally or, or uh, his or her locality. First, by assuming a positive identity going further than other organizations at the time, the Black Consciousness Movement found a healthy balance between theory and practice. Over the last five years of his life and during a period over which he was banned, Steve Biko managed to establish an extensive network of community projects based on the notion of self-reliance. Father Stubbs later described this success as a showcase for community development. Since the age of 15, I had the opportunity to represent my father at various events around the world held in his honor. Over the years, I have come to meet people whose lives were changed by him. While the world has looked to South Africa for lessons, I remain disturbed by the faintness of the name of Biko among young South Africans. Fainter still are the names of people such as Mapeta Mohapi, Mtuli Gashezi, and numerous leaders who had laid down their lives during that era. The edition of I Write What I Like comes out of the 10th year of our democracy, a period over which the nation is taking stock of the road we have walked. It comes at a time when we are reviewing some of the political options we have adopted and almost without fail, we can take each of the top challenges still facing us as a nation and fight a, substan a substantive and relevant reference in the writings of Biko. May his thinking continue to be part of the national dialogue as we continue to define ourselves. This is from his son, Nkosinati Biko. Thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. It's an opportunity for you to learn, read, and understand the ideologies of the late, great Bantu Stephen Biko from the Black Consciousness Movement, who unfortunately passed on in 1977. But he lives on through his writings, and his ideologies are passed on to the next generations. That's why some of us are always preaching, relying on yourself, building our own businesses as black people, keeping the money uh, revolving around our community, creating wealth for our families and encouraging every black family to have a business or be selling a product or be having a side hustle. That has been my struggle over the past couple of years and I'll still continue to do so because I am inspired by the likes of Stephen Van Tuguiko, um, the likes of Robert Subukwe, the likes of Marcus Gavi, uh, Malcolm X, etc etc thank you very much for watching the hustlers corner don't forget to um like share subscribe subscribe on this channel in case you landed on this video accidentally let everybody else know don't forget to click the sharp sharp sign the like button on the count of three one two three click 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 click
This is The Hustlers Corner.